I am Vin Morgan. The following comprehensive presentation of Dr. Heisha Murray will not only show you the many advantages of guided surgeries, but more importantly, their associated limitations and risk, as well as the sources of these potential issues. I applaud Dr. Murray's conservative yet realistic approach to guided surgeries. Yes, guided surgeries can present risk and have limitations, but with proper training, they can be an important technique for certain patients in their clinical situations. The initial video before Dr. Murray's presentation will offer a succinct overview of Bicon's guided surgery instrumentation using a teeth-supported guide for a fully guided implant placement of a mandibular molar. It should be noted that Bicon's guided surgery kits are specific to the diameter of the intended implant. And unlike regular reamers, which subsequently widen an osteotomy, Guided reamers subsequently deepen an osteotomy. This video will demonstrate the two-stage placement of a short implant utilizing Bicon's guided surgery kit. After taking a CT scan and having a surgical guide fabricated, the guide is inserted into the patient's mouth to ensure its proper fit. The tissue punch may be used if a flap is not desired. Remove the guide and expose the crest using a conservative flap. A retraction suture is used to facilitate the proper seating of the guide and to keep the flap out of the surgical site. Insert the guide into the mouth and start with the spade drill, rotating at 400 RPM with external irrigation. Next, deepen the osteotomy with sequentially longer guided reamers, rotating at up to 50 RPM without irrigation. As with the spade drill, only begin rotating the instrument once the tip of the instrument has contacted bone. The full depth is reached when the guide stop contacts the guide ring. The final reamer should correspond with the length of the intended implant. Once the intended depth has been reached, a curette is used to confirm the five walls of the osteotomy and to assure there is no remnant material that could prevent the implant from being fully seated. Using the sterile packaging, engage the implant to the implant inserter and turn the barrel until it sits flush with the top of the implant. Place the implant through the guide until it is fully seated. Disengage the implant inserter and remove it. After removing the guide, a cut black healing plug is inserted into the well of the implant. The harvested bone, collected during reaming, is placed over the shoulder of the implant. The site is sutured and a radiograph is taken. This completes the demonstration for the two-stage placement of a short implant using Bicon's guided surgery kit. Hello. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Isham Marei. 
I have been doing guided implant surgery for the last five years. Today, I'm here to present my story of guided surgery when I used Picon implants. My presentation is divided into three parts. The first part is about the concept of computer-guided implant surgery. And in the second part, I'm going to present four clinical cases that show the different protocols of guided surgery. Finally, I will end by discussing the limitations of computer-guided surgery and the different sources of errors. The workflow begins by requesting a CBCT for the patients, which will result in having BICOM files, then optical scanning of the patients to obtain an STL file representing the 3D image of the intraoral structures, then virtual simulation of the treatment plan using implant planning software, which ends by designing and exporting the surgical guide for 3D printing. As we discussed, the first step after clinical examination is requesting a CBCT for the patients. There are certain requirements for patient position during taking the comp CT. As all of you know, it's very important to have absolute stability of the patient during scanning. Also, the vertical laser marker should divide the face into two equal halves, while the horizontal laser marker should be parallel to the occlusal plane. Finally, the area of interest should be at the center of the field of view. Also, it is advisable to separate the upper and lower teeth during scanning to avoid the overlap of the incisor edges and the occlusal surfaces of the mandibular teeth while planning for maxillary implants. Also, it is recommended to place cotton rolls in the buccal vestibules to avoid the overlap of the shadow of the soft tissue on the buccal cortical plate of the edentulous space. While for completely edentulous arch, we uh, follow a dual scan protocol, which involves two CBCT scans, one for the patient denture, or we sometimes call it the scan process, and the second one for the patient while wearing the denture or scan process. The scan process is an existing removable process or a radiolucent duplicate of the diagnostic teeth set up with dual scan markers integrated or glued into the surface. Or you can use uh, 1.5 or 2 mm skin markers which can be placed on the surface of the denture, as you can see in this slide. During scanning the patient with the denture, the patient should be biting on a bite index, which is 3 to 5 mm thickness. It functions as um, it stabilizes the upper and lower denture in place. Uh, also, it is your reference for stabilizing the upper and lower surgical guide during surgery so you don't throw it away after scanning. The second uh, step in the workflow is digitizing the patients to obtain an STL file, which stands for Standard Triangle Language or Standard Tessellation Language. Digitizing the patients involves direct scanning of the upper and lower dental arch using intraoral scanner or indirect scanning of the patient study models or patient's impression using a desktop scanner. If you don't have intraoral or extraoral scanners, uh, you can perform a CBC scan for the patient impressions. And then the DICOM files can be later exported as an STL files using some of the freely available software. However, um, the accuracy might not be as good as performing a direct intraoral scanning. The third step in the workflow is using an implant planning software to simulate the treatment plan and virtually place the implants after an accurate registration of the CVC and the SEL files. There are many software in the market such as Simplant, Co-Diagnostic, Nopic Clinicians, 3Shape Implant Studio, On Demand 3D, and Blue Sky Pi. The implant planning software can facilitate the designs of the different surgical guides. We have either teeth supported surgical guides which have to rest on teeth during drilling and implant insertion, or you might uh, use a bone supported surgical guide which requires opening a mucopyosteal flap, and in this case, the surgical guide has to be fixed on bone using anchor pins or uh, titanium screws. The third type is a mucosa supported surgical guide which would rest on the mucosa and will allow you to uh, perform flapless surgery in a completely dangerous uh, arch. 
These surgical guides can facilitate either a fully guided or partially guided surgical approach. In a fully guided approach, you need to use a fully guided implant kit. Implant drilling or rimming is performed through the surgical guide. Implant placement is still performed while the guide is still in place. In a partially guided protocol, we have two different variations, which are pilot drill and universal drill approach. In a pilot drill, we perform only the initial drilling using the pilot drill, while the guide has the corresponding pilot drill ring and sleeve, and then widening of the osteotomy is performed using the freehand kit till the implant insertion, which is done also freehand. In a universal drill protocol, drilling is performed using a universal drill kit till the drill before the last one, and then the last drill is performed freehand using the freehand surgical kit of the corresponding implant system. The last step in the workflow is manufacturing the surgical guides, which is usually performed through additive manufacturing or 3D printing. There are many different types of 3D printers currently available in the market. However, the most commonly used for in-office printing is based on either SLA or DLB printing technology. The second part of my presentation is clinical cases showing the different guided surgery protocols. And for demonstration purposes, we are using 3Shape Implant Studio as a planning software for simulation of the treatment plan. In case number one, we have a 50 years old male patient who is medically fit and well, presented to replace missing teeth number 35 and 36. The workflow involves importing the STL, then digital wax up to proceed with a prosthetically driven treatment plan, importing the patient CT, surface registration of the CBCT and the STL of the patient. As you can see, the registration shows a homogeneous green color as per the color map, which is an indication for an accurate registration of the two surfaces. Then the registrations can be checked in different lengths, and as you can see, the yellow line of the STL is following the radio opaque surfaces of the mandibular teeth in different planes. Since this step could be a potential source of error, it needs to be checked in different planes. And this video is demonstrating checking the alignments in different planes. Then we have virtual implant planning using PyCon implant 4.5 by 6 at site 35. As you can see, the implant is virtually placed to be around 2 millimeters below the crest of the ridge. Again, virtual implant simulation at site 36 using 4.5 by 6 bicon implants. And this is a panoramic view showing the relations of the two implants to each other and to the infu alveolar canal. Since we are planning for a partially guided protocol using a pilot drill, we need to adjust the offset distance to be consistent with the pilot drill that you have. So here, the offset distance is the distance between the top of the ring and the implant head. It is adjusted in this case to be 12 mm plus a 6 mm implant, so you need a pilot drill with a stopper at a length of 18 mm. The same was applied to implant at site 36. This is the design surgical guide, exported as STL, printed and fitted on the study model. The printed guide is a T-support surgical guide and its fit is checked on the patient's mouse. Then routine procedures, crystal incisions through a gingival circular incision with no vertical releasing incisions. The buccal and lingual soft tissue is reflected using the flanges of the surgical guides and the pilot drill is inside the pilot drill before drilling. And here drilling to a depth of 18 mm as initial pilot drilling and parallel pins in place. Then we continue the procedure as usual using the freehand kit. The implant insertion is freehand. And here the implants are at their final seated positions and the healing plugs are in place. Then the half set bone from the rimming procedures is used to graft the buccal sites at implant 3.5. This is a pre-optive virtual plan and the post-optive OBG. In case number two, we are demonstrating a partially guided protocols to place implants at sites 2.5. And in this case, 
it is obligatory to use a pilot drill. Let us see how we are going to manage this case. It is for a 55 years old lady presented to replace missing tooth number 25. We have selected 4.5 by 6 millimeter Picon implants. As I said, in the last case, the use of partially guided protocol using a pilot drill was an optional. However, in this case, it's obligatory due to the limited edentural space available at this site, which limits the use of 4.7 ring. The selected pilot ring allows for 2 mm drill diameter. This is the final virtual placement of Picon implants. Again, it is 2 mm below the alveolar crest, and the offset distance is adjusted to be 11 mm, so we need a pilot drill with a stopper at 17 mm. The design surgical guide then exported into STL. This is the patient's pre optive intraoral photo, and the T support surgical guide is fitted in place. The pilot drill with a stopper at 17 mm, limited crystal incision drilling using the pilot drill, and then widening the osteotomy using the Picon freehand implant kit. Implant placement is performed freehand. This is the pre optive virtual plan and the immediate post-optive periapical radiograph. It appears that the implant has a distal tilt, however, it is centered perfectly under the center of the planned crown. In the next case, case number three, we are going to demonstrate a fully guided uh, surgical protocol in placing 4.5 by 6 implants. So this is a patient's pre-optive CBCT, showing missing tooth 37 with a horizontal bone deficiency at the buccal site. The same protocol, importing the patient's CBCT, still STL with a digital wax up, then surface registration of the CBCT and the STL, and here zero indicates no deviation between both surfaces. Virtual insertion of implant 4.5 by 6, then selecting 4.7 millimeter Picon ring, and this is the design surgical guide. Then drilling protocol showing the implant order number, the minimum drilling depth, and the use of short implant in this case allowed the guided placement of implants in the posterior region of a patient with a limited mouth opening. So this is the Picon 4.5 guided surgery kit, and this is preoptive photo showing buccal concavity and uh, lack of keratinized tissue on the buccal site. So we decided to perform a crystal incision instead of tissue punch to preserve the keratinized tissue and to allow for buccal bone grafting, widening the osteotomy using 4.5 by 6 reamer from the guided surgery kit, final osteotomy with a very thin buccal wall, guided implant placement using implant guided inserter, then the implant in its final seated position and grafting the buccal wall using the harvested bone and attaining a primary closure with 4-0 vicryl suture. This is a pre-optive virtual plan and the post-optive OBG. In the next case, case number 4, we are going to show the fully guided surgery through a flapless approach. So we have a 55 years old lady who is medically fit and well presented to replace missing posterities. The plan is to perform a fixed restoration on the upper right side as a part of a comprehensive treatment plan. The patient has buccal bone deficiency at site 1-2. So a routine workflow begins by importing the patient CBCT, importing the patient STL, digital wax up. Although we have five missing teeth, still the edentural space is just enough to accommodate four crowns. Surface registration of the STL to the patient CT shows accurate alignment and simulation of three implants at site 161413. And this is the axial view showing the relations of the three implants to each other. The design surgical guide with implant sizes. Patient's pre-optive view and the surgical guide is fitted well on the teeth. Tissue punch using tissue punch instrument in the guided surgery kit. At this stage, it's better to preserve the keratinized tissue just in case if you didn't get a good primary stability due to, uh, for instance, low bone quality, so you can retain back the keratinized tissue and proceed as a two-stage surgery. Widening the osteotomy using the different trimmers, which are available in the guided surgery kit. 
guided implant placement using the guided implant inserter, attaching immediately the temporary abutment. And here, if you decided to perform a two-stitch surgery, you might return back the cut keratinized tissue and stitch it back in place. And this is the patient's pre-optive virtual plan and the patient's post-optive OPG showing implants nicely placed and parallel to each other at the upper right side. The last part of my presentation is about the limitations of computer-guided implant surgery and the sources of errors. A recent article discussing the different consensus about the use of digital technology showed that the mean deviations of computer-guided implant surgery at the entry point was 1.2 mm, at the apical position it was 1.5 mm, and for angular deviation it was 3.5. Such source of errors could be attributed to multiple factors such as CBCT acquisition, surface scanning, virtual planning, 3D printing, sterilization of the surgical guides, and its supporting structures and surgeon experience. All these factors together dictate the accuracy of the final product. So during CBCT acquisitions, head tilt could be a source of error as it can lead to a vertical measurement error of 3 mm and a horizontal error of around 1 mm. This is a correct head position and this is a tilted head position. Also, double margins of the bone due to patient's movement during scanning. It will be difficult during virtual implant planning to know which margin is the correct one. Uh, also, presence of radio-opaque lines radiating from metallic restoration. It can obscure the dental structure, which complicates the surface registration process. Furthermore, the same article is showing that the margin of error in CBCT uh, is under or over estimations by one millimeter. Another recent systematic review shows that accuracy is limited to specific applications in terms of intraoral or extraoral scanners, and the scanning of completely edentrous arch is still a clinical challenge. During implant planning, there are different sources of error. The most common source of error is alignment error. As you can see, the yellow line representing the study model is not following the radio-opaque surface of the corresponding mental structures. Alignment is adjusted to have a complete and accurate overlap or accurate stitch between the two surfaces. Another error could happen during the virtual immediate implant placement. Sometimes the CBCT is not sharp enough to differentiate between the radio opacity representing the tooth enamel and the buccal cortical plate. So it can become difficult to know exactly where to position the head of the implant in relation to the future extraction socket. Another error could happen to you during virtual tooth extraction from the STL. The virtual extractions might not 100% be similar to the real extraction, resulting in an area of excess that obstructs the guide during, plas during placement, resulting in an area of excess that obstructs the guide during placement. And this is an example of lack of fitting of a surgical guide which can result in deviation of implant insertion. Another potential source of error is designing the guide to engage heavy undercuts on both sides of the arch. For these guides to fit, we had to divide it into two halves. In regard to printing, the market involves every day new different printers. Still, the accuracy of every printer plays a factor in our final product. And this is a recent article that evaluated two types of printer and reach it to a conclusion that accuracy is a device dependent. Another potential source of error during printing is to add the support on the fitting surface of the guide or the ring. Its removal later on might lead to change in the internal dimensions of the guide, leading to a change in the angulation of the ring during placement. Other sources of errors could be the implant lens, Spatial inhibitions with limited mouse opening, the inability of the operator to place the drill properly inside the ring might lead to deviations during the drilling procedures. It's also reported that the shorter drilling lens below the sleeve, the more accurate is the final results, which support the use of shorter implants with guided surgery. Also, the type of support during surgery is another factor which dictates the degree of accuracy. Uh, it is well documented that two support guides offer more accurate results 
than mucosa and pond support guides. It's recommended that the surgical guides should be digitally designed on a surface scan model rather than on a DICOM data. Uh, moreover, the surgeon experience is also another factor. Expert surgeons perform more accurate results, especially in the partially guided surgery. Based on all the presented sources of errors, let us imagine that we have another surgeon who is working on completely identical patients with a critical amount of bone width, placing long implants, and doing this through a flapless approach using a mucosa supported surgical guides. So we can imagine how would be the accuracy of this procedure. So the take home message of my presentation is computer guided implant surgery can offer you accurate results. However, it is not free of risks and complications that are sometimes difficult to manage by novice surgeons. By this, I would like to conclude my presentation and thanks very much for your attention. Hello Bicon's guided surgery kits and techniques are simple, straightforward, and efficient. Guided surgery is most often unnecessary. While with Bicon's 5mm short and 3mm narrow implants, all areas of the edentulous alveolus can effectively be treated with free-handed implant placements. Although it is true, most Bicon clinicians find it simple and convenient to place implants free-handedly. In certain circumstances, guided surgery techniques can be beneficial for both clinicians unfamiliar with Bicon implant system and for experienced clinicians as well. The following three guided surgery treatment videos will demonstrate these facts. The first video shows the use of a teeth supported guide for the fully guided placement of a mandibular molar. The second video demonstrates the use of a mucosa supported guide for the fully guided placement of four mandibular implants, where there is ample bone to justify the use of a mucosa supported guide.
The last video demonstrates the use of a teeth-supported guide for a partially guided surgery for the initial preparation of the osteotomy to the floor of the sinus. It then shows the subsequent elevation of the sinus floor using free-handed instrumentation for the placement of a molar implant with an internal sinus lift procedure. Hopefully this presentation has furthered your understanding of Bicon's versatile guided surgery techniques for the benefit of both you and your patients. Thank you for having watched.